Hey folks, it's Brian here. So, uh, unfortunately, my air conditioner in my house died. It's been about two weeks now. Uh, and it is the Goodman system that I had the issue with uh, two years ago where we had a nearby lightning strike and it took out the comfort net because it doesn't have any kind of protection against EMP. So it fried the interior board. So anyway, I'm gonna be putting in a ACIQ system I don't think this thing has a name on it. Yeah, so it's OEM'd by Medea. Um, I guess they left the label off this. Overall, it's a nice system. It's an 18 sear. Um, the Goodman unit, let's go out and look at it. So here we are, it's the good for nothing man unit. So this is supposed to be a 16 sear, two stage variable speed blower, ATPC DSC, DSCZ system. And it was. Um, when the comfort net stuff died, my electric bill went up about $50 a month, which is about a 25% increase. And quite frankly, it was irritating. So about two weeks ago, I woke up and I thought, man, it's a little warm in this house. This house is never warm. And I looked and sure enough, it was 77 set on 72. And I thought, wow, that's really weird. So I went outside and realized that it had tripped a breaker. And so I reset it and immediately tripped again so I came over and I looked at it. I couldn't figure out what was going on. I thought maybe it was a bad capacitor. So I changed the capacitor, reset it. It hummed for a second and I looked inside to see what was humming down in here. And I heard a pop and I saw refrigerant start exiting from the compressor. So what, what really happened is the insulation blanket must have been vibrating and there's a wire that goes around the right side of this compressor. I think it operates the load unload valve for the second stage and it shorted out. And so um, at any rate, the compressor is kaput because whatever went on the refrigerant, the R410 blew out from the uh, terminals and that is an unrecoverable incident. You can't fix that. So I called an air conditioning guy and I had him come out and give me an estimate. And he said, well, you know, the part's $1,500 and it's gonna be, you know, by the time we're done with install and replacing some other stuff, it's gonna be about another thousand to $1,200. So I'll tell you more of this in a minute. So I put this system in seven years ago and this is the inside half of it. Oh. And Honestly, it's been a good, reliable system, other than the control board in here lost the communicating network capacity and there was no weird way to repair it. And honestly, I don't feel like it should have died. Um, so anyway, you know, I paid $3,200 for this system seven years ago, delivered, and I put it in myself. Now, before any of my bitter, angry HVAC hacks start throwing darts at me, one, I have my EPA license, 608, or certification, 608609. And two, in Texas, it is completely legal for homeowners to do their own work. And <clears throat> if there was an install problem, it would have showed up well before seven years. So anyway, I'm not about to spend two and a half to $3,000 replacing a compressor outside on a unit that already has an interior problem that's killed the efficiency, which was the whole reason I put the system in. So at that point, I said the hell with it, and I bought a new system to replace this, and this one's coming out. That'll be another video. I am going to video the whole process so that um, people understand how it works. Now, I'm not going to encourage you to do your own air conditioning work unless you know what the hell you're doing. And I'm going to go further on record to say that most HVAC people don't know what the hell they're doing. And that's why you wind up with air conditionings that sound like they're a jet trying to take off or that have any host of other issues that are just wrong. I, I'm a licensed home inspector in Texas. I'm also a code certified home inspector. I'm a residential combination inspector with ICC. I used to be an insurance adjuster, but when I look at air conditioning systems, the vast majority of them have something wrong with them that impacts their performance, their efficiency, or the safety of the install and system. So much so that I refer to it as has violations and concerns. Um, there are only a couple companies in the Houston area whose work I've seen that consistently it is spot on and it is right. 
I'm not going to name names because that's not this about. This video is about me, not them. But at any rate, if you do not know what you're doing and you don't know what a manual J, a manual D, and a manual S is, do not install your own system. <clears throat> However, if you do know what a manual J, a manual D, and a manual S is, and you're prepared to run them and use them, and you can pull a vacuum with a digital micron gauge, and you can braze or make flare connections, then you probably have a shot at doing it right. Um, so, at any rate, uh, it was $3,500 to buy a hybrid split system, which uses a mini split style condenser. Uh, it's an ACIQ, which is a private label Medea. Um, there are other companies that sell systems that look a lot like this, but those companies engage in some shady marketing practices and they will lie to you about where it's made. So I didn't buy one of their systems. Uh, I bought this system from HVACdirect.com. They were real friendly. Their support's been pretty good. Uh, the documentation from Medea could be better. It is uh, Chinese that's been translated into English. Um, but I can figure it out and it is comprehensive documentation. Um, at any rate, uh, so what's going to happen is I'm going to take this system out and I'm going to take it offline and uh, I've got some remedi remediation to do involving the thermostat. So when I lost the comfort net system, I stuck my thermostat up here. And you might be thinking, what the hell is your thermostat doing in the attic? Well, this is an encapsulated house. The attic is, is conditioned. That's why I'm using the attic as a plenum and that's not 100% code compliant, but that's the decision that's right for this house, in my opinion. When I bought this house, this air conditioner was across the doorway I'm sitting in. You had to crawl over the damn air handle to service it. That's a non-starter for me. I don't like to crawl over equipment that is my only way out. That ain't gonna happen. That's just not gonna work. And the air conditioning system did not work right, which was evidenced by the fact that they'd had window units in the upstairs rooms. Um, they had the intake down here, which is the bottom of the second floor, not at the top of the second floor. So anyway, I reworked it. I ran a manual uh, J to figure out what my load should be. It said two and a half tons. I didn't quite trust that. So I put in a three ton system that had a second stage so it could swing down to a lower speed. I put in a heat uh, recovery ventilator to swap the air and not burn a bunch of energy. By the way, that's one of the things I see that's wrong a lot of times. It's not wrong. They're, they're providing for fresh air, but they pull fresh air in with no attempt to manage the energy or the heat content. And quite frankly, that's like opening a window in your highly efficient sealed house. It's stupid. You know, uh, there are two kinds of heat that you have to remove uh, when you're doing air conditioning, and Houston is primarily a cooling climate. So one of the types of heat is called latent heat, and the other is called sensible. Sensible is what you and I react to. It's the temperature. Latent is the humidity, and until you pull the humidity out of the air, the sensible temperature doesn't change. So when you pull in hot, humid air, you're adding crap tons of load to the system, and all these systems are rated for both sensible and latent heat removal. Um, the marketing's a little deceptive because it focuses on uh, sensible heat uh, rejection in BTUs, and they, they spend a lot of time on SEER and... Um, Sear, the best way I can explain Sear is it's, it's like the miles per gallon rating on a car. It only applies when grandma drives it on a flat surface at sea level and doesn't drive like the rest of us. You know, if you step on the gas and slam on the brakes, you're going to screw your gas mileage up. So anyway, uh, Sear is conducted at a very specific set. Uh, the testing for Sear and evaluation is conducted at a very specific set of, um, uh, oh, not criteria, um, conditions. And we don't live in those conditions. It's not 78 degrees outside, you know, or it's not 85 degrees cooling to 78 degrees outside with 50% humidity. No, I live in Houston. It's 94 out today with 80% humidity and I'm trying to cool to 72 or 74. That's different. My energy consumption is going to be different because the system's working harder. Also, the line set length, the, different, the distance between the indoor unit and the outdoor unit has a lot to do with the efficiency. It's like breathing through a soda straw. You know, if I breathe through a six inch soda straw, it's a lot different than if I breathe through a 30 foot soda straw and your air conditioning compressor feels the same way. So your efficiency is impacted heavily by the length of the line set. So if you put in a 20 sear unit and you put it on a 100 foot line set, it ain't gonna work right. 
These are things your installer should be taking into account. So it may be a pain in the ass to cart the, the condenser up to the roof, but that might really be the most efficient place to put it that will get you close to delivering um, the rated performance of the unit. When I installed this, I originally wanted to put the condenser on the other side of the house, and I didn't because I was afraid it was gonna kill my efficiency. I really don't want my condenser out on the street. I don't like it out on the street, but I would rather have a lower energy bill than not. So anyway, that's kind of it. This is the first video in the project of replacing um, the system. I'm going to go from a 16 SEER rated system that I think is operating around 14 SEER to an 18 SEER system. 16 to 18 should give me uh, about a $70 a year um, savings based on online calculators. So that probably means about 120 in Houston because we air condition a lot here. Um, you know, the, and, and, you know, this is a heat pump. I didn't initially want a gas system in my home. In hindsight, I would have put in a Cat4 furnace. So a Cat4 furnace is a condensing furnace. It's a high efficiency gas furnace. It uses PVC for intake and, and exhaust pipes because it pulls all the heat out. Um, and, and again, in hindsight, I would have put in a Cat4 furnace because it's easy to run on a generator. But, um... I didn't, and I didn't run the gas capacity, and I'm not going to rip the house up to fix that. Um, I used the gas capacity for the furnace to install a tankless water heater, and I love my tankless water heater. Um, you know, in Houston, we only heat for maybe eight to ten weeks out of the year, and it's not even a consistent batch. It's mainly in uh, a little bit in November, December, we might run it for a week or two, and then in January, February, and part of March, we run the heat, and the rest of the time, we don't. And in the shoulder season, that's particularly challenging for um, a super insulated house like this, where I have closed cell on the walls and open cell on the roof deck. Um, it's just really, really hard to get the humidity out. So one of the things I'm going to do as part of this project is I'm going to install a dedicated dehumidifier up here in the attic. I've been wanting to do this for a while, and I've had a portable dehumidifier downstairs that runs and runs and runs because humidity is bad for spray foam houses. And that's another thing that I see HVAC contractors completely neglect because they just don't know what the hell they're doing when it comes to a spray foam house. And you need to keep the humidity below 60% or you will have problems with the performance and the lifespan of both the home and the spray foam. Um, and, you know, if you're just watching this, uh, if you're one of my clients or somebody's thinking about hiring me as a home inspector, you need to know these things. Um, I don't just walk the talk. I've lived it. And, yeah, okay, there might be some things that could be done differently with my systems, but my systems work and they deliver the design um, goals that I wanted them to have. So, at any rate, if you're hiring a home inspector, make sure they know, if you've got a spray foam house, make sure they understand spray foam. Make sure that they actually know what it's supposed to do and how it's supposed to be installed. Anyway, that's that's not this video. I've got some spray foam videos. Um, check out my channel. Be sure to subscribe, like, and hit that little bell icon so you find out when I release new videos. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching, and I hope you have found this interesting, and um, there will be a playlist for this series of videos, and that will um, contain all the videos related to this HVAC replacement. And this project's probably going to drag on for a couple weeks because, I, like I said, I got some remedial stuff. I got to, I got to run new wiring for the thermostat. That was one of the mistakes I made when I rebuilt this house. I should have run conduit for that. Anyway, that's not this video, so we'll talk about that later.